want to thank everybody for tuning to a special edition Still City Sports Room. I'm your host, Luther Dupree. Joined, as always, Hall of Famer Claudia Rosano, Smoking Jim Frazier. Special guest in the house today. I'm going to let Claudio introduce our guest today. All right. We have two very, very special guests. Been looking forward to this show. First of all, author of the new book, uh, Cobra, uh, Brotherhood, Baseball and Brotherhood, David Jordan. Great guy, great book. Yeah, the thing about that book, as I told David over the weekend, I read one page and I went to the next page and the next page because it was such a good, informative, entertaining book. And a man who is simply a baseball legend, the best player that I ever saw with my own eyes, seven-time All-Star, two batting titles, three Golden Gloves, 1978 Baseball MVP, or MV, Major League Baseball MVP, 1979 All-Star Game MVP, three-time Golden Glove winner, NL RBI leader, 1985, and recently inducted into the Pittsburgh Pirates Hall of Fame, Mr. Dave Parker. Thank you both for being on the show today. Thank you. I'm pleasure. All right. You know what? I'm going to lead. I'm going to lead off with something real quick, Dave Parker. In 1977 All-Star Game, you did something that I haven't seen before or since, and that is score on a single from first base. Now, explain that play, please. I think it was George Foster at the plate. He yep. hit the ball, and he hit it a little bit left center. And uh, I saw the ball on my way to second base, and I figured I could get a home plate. And I'm bad down and scored on the play. You know what, though? I don't see anybody. I mean, even the so-called fastest men in the game, I don't think they would have done that. I mean, you took off as soon as it was hit, and I'll never forget that play. All the things that you've done and accomplished, that stands out. And something that one of your former teammates, Jim Rooker, always said, he said, you will never find a highlight or a picture or a video of Dave Parker not busting it on the base paths, and and that's something that, uh, that that sticks with you. What what are your thoughts on those comments about you? Well, I figured to be the leader on the team and to be considered the best player, I had to hustle all the time. They figured if, if the best player can hustle, the other players got to hustle too. <laughs> so right. I did that for leadership purposes. You know, I, I got to say one more thing before Luther and, and, and uh, Jim get you. Something that, and I, I'm sure, I, I'm sure you know. I think you know, but we all tried to copy you: the wristbands, the snatch catches, the way you wore your hat, the way you chewed your gum, the way you would bat, and not only that, but the way you used to lead from second base, where you used to waggle your hands. I mean, nobody had. And after you hit a home run, no, you and Ricky Henderson and Reggie, those you three guys, you you couldn't take your eyes off of you. And like I said, it was such a pleasure to watch you play all those years. Um, where, where did that style come from? Was that just something that, that you, you did on your own? What was that? It was just something that I, I did on my own. I'm a trendsetter. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Doing my thing. <laughs> That's for sure. Luke? Hey, Dave. Dave is actually, you're, you're the first person I ever got an autograph from. The first uh, major league athlete I ever met in my life. So, to have you on the show is just, man, it, it brings back some great memories um, about baseball. But this past weekend, you got a chance to um, go into the Pirates Hall of Fame. Just talk about that experience, um, what it meant to you, and what the feeling was. Because I, I was honored, um, you know, to see that you, they gave that award to you. What, what did that mean to you? Well, that meant a lot. <clears throat> you know, this was a team that gave me the opportunity to play. And I started with them, and to go out with them was uh, equivalent to the, the the main Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, to go to, go to Pittsburgh, to be with Stargell, and uh, establish all those friendships and relationship with those players, it was nice to be back. Yeah. And, and it was really incredible. But a couple of things. The Pirates organization handled it in such a classy manner. And one of the things that they did at the end of the, uh, the game Saturday night, which was kind of unexpected, they put on a drone show. Mm, and yeah. they, they celebrated each of the inducted players into the Hall of Fame. So there were 19 different types of uh, drone you know, creations and whatnot. And they closed it out on Dave. 
and they actually utilize our book cover. So I have a photo of our book cover in the night sky Whoa. that just says Cobra and, and his photo that's on the book cover in you know, drone style. It was just, I, it was surreal. Now, David Jordan, uh, why, why did you pick Dave Parker as a subject of the book? And as I said, fantastic book, detailed. I followed Dave's book from, I mean, uh, career from, from, from day one, but there were so many things in there that I didn't know. But why did you choose him? Well, the, the, the project, I'll be honest with you, sort of chose me. Um, we have a mutual friend, and Parker was trying to write a book at the time, and he kind of brought me into the fold, and he's like, you know, you, you got to help him. You, I would, he's like, I would love to read a Dave Jordan, Dave Parker book. You guys are like a super group. You guys have to be <laughs> doing this together. And, and Claudia, I mean, you, you, you know Fast Paul John. You knew what that was like. Right. And there was a rhythm to it. it there was a lot of music involved. And Parker was famous for having a uh, record album of about 5,000 records at one time. So he, he absolutely adores music. And he was friends with George Benson, you know, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was, um, it was a, a, a total fit. And, and Dave was trying to get something off the ground. And I came in and I said, you know, I'd, I'd love to help you. Whatever you need, you let me know and, and I'll be here for you. And then three, four months later, uh, we connected again. Good, good. Smoking Jim? All right. Dave, J Jordan, so yes, so how has the book been received so far? What kind of feedback are you getting? I can't wait to read, uh, to read it as well. What kind of oh, feedback Lord. are you getting so far? It, it's incredible. Um, we, were, we were probably last year, we were the highest rated baseball book on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, the book was nominated for an award, uh, the Casey Award, Best Baseball Book of the Year. Uh, we were one of the nominee, nominees of that. Um, you know, it's just... It, People, people love hearing the stories from the Cobra. And, and Dave had a unique story. And when we first really started talking, he said, people are going to want to know these stories. And this was before George Floyd. This was before so many things changed in 2020. Right. And that Dave had that foresight to know that a change was coming. And the people want to hear what really happened. And also, you know, they had heard Jack, the story of Jackie Robinson. They heard the story of the second wave of Ernie Banks, of Willie Mays, of right. Frank Robinson, Beta Pinson, and whatnot. But they hadn't really heard the story of the fellas in the 70s right. at the peak right. of black baseball right. and, um, and the 70s and the 80s. So that was something Dave wanted to um, really convey, um, the life of the fellas, which really and, – and if you even think about just baseball books overall, outside of Dave Halverson's uh, teammates and, and Eric Sherman did a book about um, – going to see Tom Seaver before he passed away. There haven't been that many books about baseball friendship. Right. right. And, and, and I thought this really um, encapsulated that as well as any baseball book that, that's out there right now. And, and, and Dave really wanted to jump on that as well. Okay. We do have a caller. Um, caller, can you say your name where you're calling from? My name is Nick. I'm calling from Medina, Ohio. What's happening, Nick? Hey, Nick. What's up, Claude? How you doing, buddy? All right, brother. How are you? Good. I just wanted to uh, ask Dave something real quick. Yeah, we go ahead. Um, I'm up here. I, I coach in Ohio, fellow Ohio guy there, Dave. Um, but grew up in Pittsburgh and um, watched you all my life. Favorite player. Uh, anybody I talk to in Ohio, I say Dave Parker is better than half or, or maybe all the Hall of Famers. Cause <laughs> I think you're the best player that, that's played, in my opinion. I stopped practice today, and I brought all my kids in, 14-year-olds, and they're sitting in a little room right now watching you. And I just, um, you know, as I've been uh, doing baseball up here for so long, the one thing that really sticks out to me is just your toughness, your, your ability to, you know, I, I don't want to say intimidate, but people, <laughs> you had a presence on the field. That's right. And I see that kind of disappearing a little bit in baseball, that tenacity, that toughness. And the kids are listening to you right now, David. I just wanted to, what message would you give a, a 13, 14-year-old right now about how to play this game the right way? Well, <clears throat> I play hard and smart. You play, you play hard, good things will happen. And you play smart, that'll make you complete. So play hard and smart. There you Great go. Advice. Right. Exactly. Perfect. There you Perfect go. Perfect advice. Hey, 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 Nick, you have another question because there's a couple other people calling in. 
Uh, just one other thing I had to say is ingrained in my head for all these years. I had a, I had a coach. Claudio was a coach, man, but I had another coach. And any time I caught a ball with one hand, which I love the way you did it with the snaps, but um, when I catch a ball with one hand, it was always two hands Parker. So even when I'm coaching high school and I see a kid catch catch a ball with one hand, I think he about every time, Dave. I appreciate everything you've done for baseball. Well, thank you. All right, Nick. Thank All you for right, the Nick. call, Nick. Great call. Hey, you got great, it. Take care. Great call, Nick. Let's stay on the phone lines. Caller, say your name where you're calling from. Yeah, this is LD. LD! Uh, you know, I'm glad you have Dave Parker on. I've got a couple questions for him. Uh, the first one is, Dave, who was the best player you ever played with and the best player you ever played against? Mm, great question. So, Daniel. Hell, yeah. People, people kind of forgot about Cedeno. When he was in his prime, he was one of the best players in baseball. Mm. Uh, he was a guy that I enjoyed competing against. He uh, could run above average, throw above average, hit 300. Um, he was uh, probably, in his prime, one of the best players I ever played against. Uh, and, and what, what player did you play with who you thought was the best? I had to look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody better today. <laughs> it's the truth. Stardew, Stardew was a um, right. sound player. Uh, he uh, was sound defensively, was a great offensive player. Uh, was always good later in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he always seemed to come through late, and uh, that's a great asset to have. Dave, one thing that I'm very, very passionate about. I'm sorry. LD, okay, LD did you have another question? Just one question. Sure. Dave, you uh, batted left and you threw right. I was wondering how come you never became a, or tried switch hitting? I can hit right-handed. I used to hit right-handed in BP. I hit right-handed in a home run contest and got my teammates mad at me because I said I was showing them up. <laughs> <laughs> the game was designed for a left-handed hitter. You're closer to first base. You're going to face more right-hand pitching than you do left-hand pitching. So the game was designed for a left-hander, and I was blessed to be born, you know, the way that uh, I am right-handed and left-handed. Great question. You know, you know Dave, something that uh, I'm, I'm very, very passionate about, I, I talk about hitting all the time. I, obviously, I coach, I scout fresh, I do a lot of training. And it really bothers me the way I see hitters. And I was talking to Dave Jordan about that this weekend, how hitters hit today, strikeout, pop-up, home run. Yeah, the pitchers are throwing hard, but I think the pitchers in your day, forget about the Hall of Famers, but the other tier would dominate these guys today. But your thoughts on hitting today and, and the way the game is being taught and played today? Well, they're worried about rotation on the ball. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. you see the ball and hit the ball, and you keep it simple. Right. You know, it didn't hurt Willie Mays. It didn't hurt Mickey Mantle. It didn't hurt me. <laughs> See the ball, hit the ball, keep it simple. Guys be sitting there trying to count the rotation on the ball. The analytical part of baseball is done taking over. Everybody's trying to hit home runs. They're getting home runs. They're hitting 28, 30 home runs, but they're driving in 60 runs. Right. You know, you want to put the ball in play when men are in scoring position, take two legitimate shots and driving the ball and then cut down and go into a two-strike stand. You put the ball in play, you got a 50-50 chance of having success, and guys are forgetting about that. Everybody's trying to hit the home run. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have a question for uh, Dave uh, Jordan. Jordan. Um, hey. what, do you, what do you want people to get out of this book? Um, I know you said there's been books like this in the past, but what separates this book? The, from other uh, baseball books that have been written? It's the first true memoir, um, sports memoir about black friendship. Mm. And, and that, was, that was kind of, we wanted to be the, um, the one to set the bar for that.
Okay. And we're hoping that other books come come afterwards, and uh, and really talk about the friendship and the love uh, between black men and and I guess black women on their um, in their teams as well. Um, you know that that was important that we wanted to show the affection um, and the kinship in uh, between black athletes. Mm -hmm. Dave, now back to Dave Parker, back to the, the hitting. Um, I, again, I've been very critical of these hitting coaches. They, they see these guys, they see video, they know what pitch is coming, and they still fly open, their heads fly open, they're uppercutting. And, and, and like I said, you had such a beautiful swing, and you had great hands, you stayed closed, great head discipline, and you hit the ball hard to the other field. These guys now, with the shift, I wish they'd have had a shift on you. You'd have hit 410. But your thoughts on the shift and, again, the way these hitting coaches are teaching the game today? The shift just opens the door for base hits. I mean, you leave the left side of the infield open for a left-hand hitter, I mean, the hitter got to take advantage of that. You know, these guys go up there and hit right into the shift. And, uh, you know, you can't have success going that. That's, exactly. That's true. Hey, uh, Dave Parker, um, just talk about the friendships. You know, what was it like to be in the locker room in the 70s with, uh, with the Pirates? I mean, you guys had personalities. You guys won. It was just a great feeling. As fans, we felt it. But as a player, what was that feeling like in the 70s in that, in that locker room? It was great. It was a, a family, you know, and they, they called the 79 Pies the family, and, and that's what we were. We cared about each other. You know, guys cheered for each other, pulled for each other, and uh, it was uh, a unique situation. It was one that you had to be a part of it to really get the digest of what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, we also know, now here, here's a, against Jim Palmer. Look at that swing. Look at that. Quick hands. Yeah, we're just watching one of, yeah, we're just watching one of the highlights right now. Okay. Now, obviously, uh, you know, Dave Jordan told me, and I knew this before, but you're a big boxing fan. We host a mm. boxing show. Tell us a little bit about some of your favorite boxers, and uh, have you ever gone to any big boxing events? Well, I've seen Ali and Frazier, mm. saw them fight, saw uh, Duran and Sugar. Sugar okay. Leonard, Aguilar yeah. And Sugar. So I've seen a few. Oh, yeah. I'm going to jump in here for a second. Sure. And I'm going to tell you my favorite story of all time, all right? And I even wrote it down because I, I don't want to mess it up, but it's very, 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 very fun. So it's July 1975. The Buckos are in Chicago playing the Cubbies. Parker at this time, you know, he hung around his main man was Larry Demery, the pitcher. You okay. may or may not remember him, but I, that course, was Parker's yeah. guy for a number of years. Doc Ellis, of course. And on the road, there would be a, a post-game dinner with some combination of Stargell, Scoop Oliver, Sangi, Rennie Sinnott, and, and the rookie Willie Randolph once he came up in the middle of the season. And at this moment, though, it's kind of an odd pairing. The Cobra is in an elevator with the pitcher Jerry Royce, sure. which you remember, all-star in 1975 at a fabulous year, kind of a wise guy, cut up, looks like one of the Beach Boys. <laughs> this is the beginning of, of Parker's rise to prominence in the major leagues. He's feeling confident about his life, his swing, everything, got that swagger, says all sorts of things in the clubhouse, as you can imagine. Huge boxing fan at the time. Anyway, it's the Cobra and Jerry Royce in the elevator at a five-star Chicago hotel. The doors open on the 10th floor, and on walks Muhammad Ali. Mm. No one says a word, and then Royce leans in behind Cobra and loudly says, Hey, Parkway, why don't you tell the champ how you said you are going to kick his ass one day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And the, the, the greatest just slowly turns to the Cobra, who's quiet and super polite. Nice to meet you, Mr. Ali. I'm Dave Parker. And the champ shakes his hand and is like, I know who you are. And then looks at Royce and is like, you're a troublemaker. 
<laughs> oh, that's a great story. I, I, took out the, I, I had him in the elevator. I had to get him in the corner. <laughs> the jab. There you go. Right, right. <laughs> hey, let's let's jump to the phone lines real quick. Caller, say your name. Where you calling from? Oh yes, this is Donna from Homewood. Hey, Donna. Hey, Donna. How are you? Okay, good show. Good show. You, I'd like to ask um, uh, Dave Parker. I'm not too much of a sports person, but I liked watching baseball when you played because. You were good to look at. <laughs> I think you brought a lot of women to the game. I hope that's not sexist to say, but uh, <laughs> that's the way I thought. You know, I wasn't too much into baseball until you were going to play. But I did want to ask you also, was there a particular reason you chose the Pittsburgh Pirates? Well, I was drafted by the Pirates in the 15th round, so I really didn't have a uh, too much to say about that, mm -hmm. but uh, I stayed with them because of Stargell, Doc Ellis, all the guys that played with me, Al Oliver. We had put together a bunch of guys that played well and created an atmosphere that was enjoyable. So I uh, stayed with the Pirates because of the personnel that I was with. Now, one thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Donna. Oh, 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 I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having him on, and uh, thank you for making baseball more attractive. Have a good day. <laughs> hey, Donna, you're going to get his wife to come back on the screen and say something. <laughs> hey, but Donna, thank you so much for the call. You're welcome. Bye bye. I appreciate Thanks for that. for the compliment. There you go. <laughs> hey, hey. Dave Parker, also number 39. Is there a significance that you picked that number or? Did they give it to you? 39. What, what Bob Veal gave me that number. Okay. When, uh, when they got rid of him, they, they were bringing me to the major league. Mm -hmm. And he put me to the side and he said, wear this well. And he said, don't F it up. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me the number and gave me the information that I needed to approach Okay. Major League. Yeah, Bob Veal was was a real um, role model to uh, Parker, uh, you know, because he was one of the great pirate pitchers of the of the '60s. And then, you know, the way the Pirates had it set up was that um, their their prominent rookie players would go to every spring training. They mm. would have all the rookies mixed up with the um, with, with, with the established players on the roster. Um, so in 1971. When Bob Veal was sort of in decline, he would still be hanging out in the rec room when Dave Parker would walk in, and um, and he would give him life lessons and things like that. So he was a uh, he was quite a um, quite a great role model for Dave. Great, Dave. You know, watching we're, we're watching some highlights from a home run that you hit in the All Star game, and again the way you would run. But I, I would, I'm I'm be 58 in October. I was very blessed to grow up in a great era of baseball with the personalities and, uh, like I said, the white shoes, the wristbands, the, 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 the everything. What, what is, why is it not like that anymore? To me, it's boring. Nothing makes me, like just watching you hit that home run brings a smile to my face, right? Nothing brings a smile to my face anymore with baseball. To me anymore, I, I like coaching and scouting and all that, my game, but when I watch it on TV, it's hard to watch. Why is it so different? Well, the guys, they they got their own style. I see them, they hit home runs and throw bats up in the air <laughs> and sling the bat, and it's just different than us. We we had style, but it wasn't overboard like right, they right. did. But I've seen guys hit home runs and throw bats up in the air, <laughs> sling bats down the first baseline, and uh, it's just different. We... Uh, did eyes, but we did the cool. That's right. We, uh, it's just like the music. The music <laughs> is so different. You know, yeah. we we listen to Frankie Beverly. There you, you go. Know, <laughs> something cool like that, and Marvin Gaye. Right, right. And just a different era. Yeah, that's for sure. It's the seventies were, were something to be said of. Just just speak about Doc. You know, there, there's there's. 
you know, uh, about his no-hitter. We, we all know about the no-hitter. What was Doc like? How good was he? I don't think people you really talk about him enough. How good was he? He was good. He had a fastball that would sink away from left-handers into right-handers. Uh, he threw the ball mid-90s, hmm. and uh, he had tenacity. Doc didn't take no stuff. Right. The Reds, was, the Reds was beating us every year and knocking us out of the playoff. So Doc had a meeting at spring training and said, you guys are scared of these guys. He said, I'm going to show you that they just fall players. He said, I'm hitting everybody come to the plate. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> so the game started. Pete Rose led off, got hit in the ribs. Griffin hit in the ribs. Morgan <laughs> missed him. Morgan said, hey, Doc, come on, let's play ball, man. You know, don't be out there doing this. And Morgan got back in the box. Doc hit him in the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> and the bench came up. Doc threw at his, at his head and hit him, and Murtaugh finally came out and got him. <laughs> but Reds didn't beat us no more that year. There you go. There you go. I proved the point. Dave Jordan, what, when you talked to a lot of the former players, uh, interviewed them for the book, what was the one theme, the common thing that they all said about Dave? It's interesting. The Pirates are great. They, um, they basically, the, the organization opened up their Rolodex and, and I ended up speaking to about, about maybe 50 uh, former players, coaches, managers um, related to the organization. And they just, well, the one thing that they all said is that they all, he made them laugh. Yeah. He made them laugh. He kept things so loose and, and nobody was immune. Everybody got a taste of it from, from the players to, to the, some of the coaches. It was just, you know, it, it, it was an open forum to, uh, to get people loose and ready to play ball. And, um, and the way they had things set up, they'd have a beautiful spread of food, and it would be like, be like cocktail hour before the game. They would just hang out and, and, and jibber-jabber and then, uh, then go on the field and kick some tail. Right. Now, uh, Dave Parker, tell us a little bit about your relationship with Phil Garner. That was always got a lot of play that you guys used to get on each other pretty good. Uh, <laughs> tell us about that a little bit. Well, Phil was uh... – a clubhouse lawyer. <laughs> and uh, he would be a guy that would challenge me. <laughs> he would come in and take my music off, just stuff to act me. <laughs> so I had to get on him. And they traded six players to get him. <laughs> so I started six players my age. How you get six players for you? <laughs> and it just started a thing. People would come in early just to see what me and Phil was going to do. But Phil was uh, instrumental to us winning in 79. He was one of the key add-ons that we, we did as a team. And he was uh, instrumental in keeping the team loose. And Phil was ideal for, for us. Right. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Parker, this is Smoking Jim. Um, this week, Franco Harris's number was retired by the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm told you was one of the greatest running backs to ever come out of Ohio. Mm. If you had had a healthy knee, would, would you have gone into the NFL as a running back or a great quarterback? <laughs> I would have tried football. I love football. Mm. I was very physical. I was a, a running back that would – to run with power, I was good open field. I would hit the the old hole, bounce outside, and it was tough to catch me. So I would have tried football. Okay, okay. Hey, Dave Parker, another question I had. We know you're a boxing fan. That team in the 70s, if you would have picked one player <laughs> other than yourself to be a boxer, you thought they could have had success, who would it be and why? Big Jim Bibby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Bibby was the biggest man I ever met. He was about 6'5 and about 270 mm. and all muscle. I thought he would have been a great boxer. 
but nobody had the hands. I kept them on the end of the jet. <laughs> <laughs> How about Bruce Keeson? He's he threw a few punches to Mike Schmidt uh, one year, right? No, Bruce wasn't in the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> but he in his '71 series, he hit a few guys at the end of that that pitch. I know you weren't on the team at that time, but uh, he he was tough as well. You know what? One thing though, mm -hmm. forget about the '79 World Championship team, but let's talk about. 76, 77, 78. How great would you guys have done today? We would have did well. <laughs> we would have did real well. Mm -hmm. Because we were sound fundamentally. We uh, had everything. We had speed in the front of the lineup. Really? We had power in the middle of the lineup. We had good pitching. We had pretty good starting pitching, good relief pitching, and we were a sound ball club. Hey, Dave, you know, I look at the 70s, I see the personalities, I see the Dave Parkers, the Willie Stargells, but nowadays a lot of kids in the city, you know, it's basketball or football, they're not really playing baseball. What would you? What do you think could be done to, you know, have more kids start playing baseball? Because you look at it now, it's a lot of, you know, people aren't even, you know, from out of the country, Nothing you know, not really from the city. Nothing can be done. What do you think could be done to to get more kids and in, in, in back in baseball? I think that they could do more at All Star Game. Mm -hmm. You know, bring out a group of the star, let them do stuff with kids, a little bit like basketball. Basketball does a heck of a job dealing right. with kids. And uh, I think baseball could do a better job. And uh, take some of those players that you're paying two and three hundred million and obligate them to coming out in the community and working with the community. Hey, that's a, that's a, hey, that is a great answer. I'd love to see that happen more and more because we, you know, still city we work with kids and we've done different things with football, NFL players, but you're right, Major League Baseball doesn't really come around and do enough. So that's that's a great point. Right. Well, you know something I, I wanted to add, I was having an, uh, the chat over the weekend with, um, with Claudio about the differences in batting philosophies and how things were, you know, the, the comparisons between Dave's era and, and, and 2022. And I came across a statistic, and I thought it was really compelling. Um, and it talks, and, and it really speaks to the, the Pirates' mentality back then. You know, Jackie Robinson broke in and broke the color barrier in '47. There have been about 115 players with at least 9,000 plate appearances. And there's this there's this statistic called BRS percentage. It's the percentage of base runners who scored on the batter's play. And on on that ranking of those 115 players. Roberto Clemente is ranked number 12. Wow. Al Scoop Oliver is ranked number six. Willie Stargell is ranked number five. And Miguel Cabrera, Manny Ramirez, and Dave Parker are tied for number one. Wow. 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 And that's a stat there, yeah, man. Stat. Hey, you know, we do want to take this one more one call uh, before we let you guys go. Caller, say your name where you're calling from. Hey, guys, this is Sean. Hey, hey Sean. Sean. Hey, it's a pleasure to um, be on the phone with Dave Parker and interview him. Um, my family used to tell me stories about him and how it was an honor that the Paris had two right, right fielders that had guns for an arm with Clemente and David Parker. Right. Um, question I have for Dave Parker is that I know he's from the Cincinnati area. I have family down there. What is it with um, players in Cincinnati that come up and just become major league baseball players? You got yourself, Kent Colby, Pete Rose, Josh Harrison, Ken Griffey. What is it with um, Barry Larkin as well? What is it with um, Cincinnati um, producing major league baseball players? Mm, good question. Good question, Sean. Well, we we got a great Navajo system, and. Uh, we teach them good fundamentals. We got some of the best Navajo baseball in in the country, and I think that's one of the reasons that we're developing 
such players with, with good fundamental. Ken Griffey had uh, went to Moeller. Moeller is known for football and baseball. And I went to Cordy Tech, which we went to the city finals for two, two straight years. So it's the fundamentals that we teach here. And players seem to adapt to the style of baseball because you find all guys from Cincinnati hustle, head first, slides, die, and uh, play like Pete Rose. So that's the fundamentals that, that is taught in the Ohio area. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, so do you have another question, Sean? No, that's all I had. Um, thank you. It's an honor um, interviewing you. Like I said, my family, they will always speak highly of you as a right fielder. Good Thank question, you, Sean. Sean, oh, appreciate that. Can I get one more question in? Okay, sure. Yeah, sure. Oh. Um, final question, and I just thought about this because this is one of my favorite things. Um, how was it playing with Ricky Henderson? Because at that age, that's when I started playing Little League Baseball. Um, my second year Little League Baseball, you won the World Series with the Oakland A's in 89. How was it playing with Ricky Henderson? Because he was my favorite player. You had a good one because he was great. Yeah. He was the best ever. I mean, he uh, was a professional shopper. I was like, come get him in his shop every day. <laughs> <long while." laughs> but Ricky was sound. I mean, he, he hit for power. He led off of many games with home run. Mm -hmm. Ricky would steal bases regardless of who's holding him on, left hand or right hand. Ricky was going to be on third base but <laughs> by the time that the bat was over. Right. And Ricky was. So you picked a good one. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Thank Sean. You guys. Hey, Sean, appreciate that. Great questions, man. We, you Thank know what? You We're going to let you guys go first. Uh, Dave Jordan, uh, you know what? You've been great to me ever since we met at the 79 Pirate Reunion. Uh, we've become friends. Appreciate you. Great book. Make sure everybody goes and buys that book. Always enjoy seeing when, you, when you're in town, David Jordan. And uh, Dave Parker, I, I cannot tell you enough. You know, we had a caller, Nick Kaplack, his brother, Vinny Kaplack. We all tried to bat like you. We didn't have that kind of success with the <laughs> wristbands, as I said, the snatch catches, the shoes. Everything you did, we emulated. You were the reason why we watched Pirate Baseball. I mean, we loved Pirate Baseball, but you were the one we magnified on, magnifying glasses on. Nobody had more style than you. You were the best player that I ever saw with my own eyes. You, again, a Hall of Famer. Everybody knows you're a Hall of Famer. And not only that, I always appreciate your business uh, after you retired from baseball, the way you are as a man, most important. You had so much impact on me, not only as a player, but as a person. And you have no idea the thrill it is to, for me to be able to say that I interviewed you on this show. So thank you uh, for your time. And you, again, you have no idea how important you are to so many people here in Pittsburgh, but for sure me. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dave. People, and that, that means a lot. That's what you play for, to get people to comment like that. But again, even the way you wore your hat. People don't even wear the hat that way, that pillbox with that little tilt. Pill and box. the way you hit a home run. Everything, the way you would chew gum. My parents loved you. We love you. And we wish you nothing but the best. And uh, like I said, j just keep at it. And, and God bless you always. And thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Happy right. to be here. Dave Jordan, Thanks, thank Dave you, brother. Jordan, thank Dave you very Parker. much for yes. setting this up. Thank you both. Take care. All now. right. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Man, that was excellent, man. It, it was. First, first major league pay, player I met, I still have the picture, me, four years Where's old. I was going to show it, but <laughs> I'll I, have I, it for I next have, time. I still have the pictures of him. I still got in, the gloves in the, and, in the and all white that stuff. pinstripe uh, pirate thing in, in, in my home been office. A good time to break some of that stuff. I, we have hey, the listen, little statue. What, we got hey, it all. There was nobody like Dave Parker. I'm telling you, all these guys today, in all honesty. Are, I, I'm not ripping on anybody. I'm just saying what it is. They're boring, especially compared to him. Well, yeah. his interviews were big time. He hey guys, no. that, this is great. I appreciate it. Are you, are you cutting us out? Do we cut out? How does this work? Oh, say it again. Yes, we, we thought you guys. Out. We thought we thought uh, we thought you but, guys hung up. But I'm glad you heard that. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you again. No, we appreciate you we guys appreciate being you on. Guys. Thank you, thank you.
Thank you. All right, we'll see you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All right. Yeah, so we're, we're going to uh, close close the Zoom link now, but but that was a, that was great, guys. It, it, it was, was tremendous. What did he mean when he was talking about the fundamentals in Cincinnati, the Naho? What's that? What's that? Is that Pony Probably. League? Their Pony yeah, League? I guess it's a Pony yeah. League. I guess, you know, we got. But you know what, what they're saying is we, back then, even, right. even here in Little League, we I, I'll never forget, I can show you where and swiftly when I was in Little League, 1970. Well, no, we, no, back then we didn't oh, play with the cake but I was showing we, how we, to. Like we had Uptown, we had Uptown. How to straddle? You heard of Uptown? We listen, Uptown on the hill. They went it. and played. He was worried about hockey. They played at the uh, Little League but World I, Series. I, I can show That's you. the first team from around. I can here. show you where I was. Sean played for them. Sean played for them. I, I can show you where I was when I was taught how to straddle the bag and make a tag at third. They did do fundamentals. They showed you how to bunt. They showed you how to hit. And nowadays, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we were lucky. Was it, was it, was it, <laughs> whatever it was, whatever it was, it worked. It now, worked. Now Jim wants to answer. Now, now Jim he wants woke to up. Talk. Jim woke up. You asked one question, Jim. All right. But now listen. We got to get back. We got to make our predictions. Jim, I'm going to put you on the spot. Now, okay, when we first started this, you said Mason Rudolph. Was going to be the star. Also said Duck was a great quarterback. You also said he didn't Duck. He didn't Duck embarrass Duck. himself, did he? He don't he have a hat. Well. Does does he have a hat? <laughs> did he play well? Is he is he, he has a hat? He, does he have a hat? That's a well, cut and paste. It was a cut, <laughs> cut and paste. And paste. Yeah. But I mean, did 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 he did he play well this summer? Did he I did make a, that prediction? He didn't, At least give me that. He didn't suck. At least like, give me that. He didn't suck like he usually did. How about that? He let a rookie. <laughs> straight, straight off of a senior bowl, beat him out for second. Well, you don't like Ty Cobbs and you don't like Mason Rudolph because they dropped the N word. I don't worry about what. I guy. worry about if a guy can play. <laughs> Did you mention anything about Ty Cobb? I didn't say nothing about uh, if a guy can play, he can play. Mason Rudolph can't like, play. Well, he looked pretty good in preseason. Uh, and I, I he see, good in and all these quarterbacks that got hurt, nobody traded for him. So I look well, right. Who was they supposed to trade for? Kaepernick. <laughs> nobody, nobody came knocking on the door for Mason Rudolph. Listen, Mitch Trubisky, as I told you, he was going to start. Yeah. Kenny Pickett, he's waiting his time. And I, I put, think it's the and right I put move. Money on Cincinnati already. Thank you. Yeah, listen, I put to, money on Cincinnati. They went, they went to the Super Bowl, Jim. They went to the Super Bowl. Jim was going on the hey, limb. I'm gonna make a lot he's of money this year. Hey, listen. listen to you. Listen, well, well, listen, you you were wrong about Mason Rudolph. Yeah, I was right about the offensive about line. Duck. Was I right about the offensive line? Put me on the spot about the offensive line. There's still a question. Was we I all, right about all, we, well, we, what question? We you all got? knew the offensive line was going to struggle. Well, evidently, Omar Khan what? didn't. <laughs> Listen, they went out, spent some money on a center and a guard, and there's a new offensive line coach. We'll see what happens with Cincinnati. They have not looked good. You, you finally got one right. Well, I got some money. I got some money. You, you, you finally got one right. Well, how about uh, how about Devin Bush? Devin Bush <laughs> is the starting inside linebacker, and I told you he would. How about be. making uh, Mitch? Trubisky, team captain, and by the you fourth know, game what, of the season, he'll be on the bench. Listen, well, you how about know, making Najee pick, Harris? Who how is Najee Harris pick. captain? Kill he wasn't even captain in boy, Alabama. How about your boy Killebrew? <laughs> yeah, Killebrew, special listen, team captain. No, you know, who I pick, okay, who picks the team captains on your team, Claudia? The players. So evidently, yeah, the players yeah, think yeah, he's the guy. Yeah, Coach Tom Mitch Trubisky, Mitch too. Trubisky came, yeah. acted like a leader. He opened up his house in Florida. Yeah, invited yeah, all the quarterbacks yeah, yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I ain't going for a stop. visit. Well, don't don't give me some balls. Invited, open his house up. Did they put a decal for um, oh. Dwayne Haskins yet on their on their helmet, or is it just going to be Lynn Dawson, who only played uh, here a few months? Let's see. Come How on. come they ain't even you talking about the guy? Huh? They have one Lynn Dawson for real. I'm just saying. No, they don't have they, one. They, 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 they're trying to start fake news. But they're talking Jim. about Lynn Dawson more than they're talking about um, Dwayne Haskins. Well, let's hope let's hope he gets the recognition yeah. he deserves. You know, he, he definitely, you know, again, that's just tragedy. But he opened up his home. He's a leader. Najee Harris, you have a problem with Najee yeah, Harris. Yeah, he wasn't captain at Alabama. Players, we're, not, we're not Alabama no more. Well, the when, players see his work ethic. When, they see yeah, the yeah. guy. The so, reason why Troy Polamula <laughs> took so long. <laughs> the reason it took Troy so long to be captain is because he did his own thing in the offseason. Najee does his own thing. How long did it take them to be team captain? No, it they, took him a long time, and he was the quarterback. Okay. Mitch well, Trubisky won offseason. The players see the leadership I'm and talking his about Najee right now. Well, Najee. I'm Najee. saying Navajo. he it's does a, his own <laughs> workouts. He does his own thing. And he's apparently not a team it's working. He's not a team captain in the second year. 
Why not? Why, well, Apparently, it's the teammates. Why didn't he Alabama is. vote him team We're captain? Not Alabama, We're not I'm in Alabama, Jim. We're not in Alabama. All of a sudden, he's a great leader. You criticize uh, Deontay, Deontay Wilder. Wilder. Huh? You criticize Deontay Wilder's statue and everything else from Alabama, <laughs> but now you want to talk about I the love Najee Harris. He, ain't, he shouldn't be captain in Why the not? second year. Why and not? Mitch Trubisky shouldn't Why be not? captain when he's going to sit the bench the players the fourth know, game of the season. The players know who the leaders are. No, they know who, really? Yeah, apparently, they do. Really? T.J. Watt? You have a yeah. problem with T.J. Watt? You know what? You know. I, with love, I love Coach Cower. I love Coach Cower. But it was known that he was the one that counted the votes. And <laughs> just like Coach Tomlin. Who I knows think, who they're I think they put for. this C on uh, Trubisky with Velcro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They can, they can pull it off. Yeah. Listen, has he looked solid in the preseason? Yeah. He's looked solid. Give him a he chance. He had one good preseason game. No, he has had more than that. Well, he has some he didn't have no but, turnovers. But back to Pickett. What, what have they done with Pickett other than dunks, dunks, dunks? Yeah. I, I, Mario, I you haven't been a job. fan since I went to the game. You said, he's not Marino. The he's whole not. game, not. I couldn't enjoy the game because Claudio, that's not Marino. His arm's not Marino. I said, it's not. I said, Number Claudio, one pick nobody. when and you I tried need to an offensive line. Claudio, I said, nobody's Marino. You, you can't compare that. everybody you to Marino. Kirk Cousins. He ain't Kirk Cousins. <laughs> he's better than Kirk Cousins right now. <laughs> he better he hope he puts up he doesn't stats. have the pocket. Boy. You better hope he puts up them stats like Kirk Listen, Cousins. Man. Like I said, they need an offensive line. If you want to draft them, fine. Listen, but even if they got off, with their, if they get one guy from college, two. who's to say their two. offensive line would be better right now? What, what we are they going to do with Pickett? What are they going to do with Pickett? Pickett is solid. Has he not looked good in the preseason? He's selling shirts. <laughs> Listen, Kenny Pickett. Am I right? Kenny You're Pickett right. is a future. All star quarterback. What? Yes. What? Yeah, he's going to be a pro bowl. Mark the tape. I see it already. He's a leader. The teammates love him already. He reads the defense quickly, gets rid of the ball. And who's the most popular here? person on the on the football Backup field? Quarterback. Backup quarterback. Cliff Stout. They love Cliff yeah. Stout. Oh man, he's cute. Since he threw two interceptions, he's the ugliest person oh, I ever yeah, saw. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, the hell listen, Mark Malone. Listen. Oh, Mark Magnum T. Let's, with the Magnum T. I. Whatever the hell his name was. Oh, he's just. I well, like Mark Malone. He's my well, favorite well, Steelers quarterback. Yeah. Susie threw a few picks. Get him the hell out of there. First of all, you are both taking. And L's. they're gonna miss both. You seven. guys have taken L's. On the preseason so far, okay. you weren't sold on Pickett. He looks like the real deal. Can you admit that? No. <laughs> well, I, you got to get your glasses checked. You said Mason Rudolph was going to be the starting quarterback. Yeah, I told you he looks believe. better gone. He's still here somehow. Do the Steelers want to win yes or no? Of course they then do. Then if Pickett's so great, why don't they start him? Troy Aikman He's not started. ready. He's not ready. Why would you start him against Cincinnati? If well, he's better no than – if he's so good – This is the first year since 2007 the NFL didn't open up with a starting rookie quarter. None of them. The so, so what does that tell you? None of them. He wasn't good enough to start. Uh, or Mitch Trubisky did what he had to do. Trubisky's you know? better. Then you should have signed no, him. No. They, they wasted that number no, one draft waste, pick. No, they didn't. In my no, opinion. No, now, get, he could turn out to be big time. a franchise quarterback just, at number 20. He's a franchise good. quarterback. Yes, he is. Okay. Yes, he is. I hope he is. I mean, I'm he kept the votes that the fat black punter get. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, was he kicking his behind off? He kicked a 78-yard punt. Yeah, that's all he think he did. We'll see. <laughs> that's all he got to do. Punt the ball. Listen, we'll see. Devin Bush, he didn't get cut. You said he was going to get cut. He still I didn't say team. he was going to get cut. What'd you say? The Steelers don't cut nobody because they don't want to admit they made a mistake. I said he's going to look like he's scared. You didn't hit, like him from day one. Did. You, you didn't like him from day one. Listen, I still Listen right. his, before he had that tragic he's already injury, burned. he was, he's he was a solid running slow. back. Jarvis, too slow, Joe. And I told you, Miles Jack was going to be key. Miles Jack yeah, we all from Jacksonville that. We all do was that. key. It's because you wear a beard. I mean, you're a <laughs> professor, college professor. Let's get back to the phone lines, man. You guys keep catching L's. I don't know if this is the boxing authorities or still see the sports world, but you all catch L's here just like you do in the boxing authorities. Call us. Say your name where you're calling from. Gentlemen, it's Kelly Russell. Kelly! What's hey, up, Kelly? Kelly? What's up, Kelly? Hey, first and foremost, I want to say, all these still city sports world can bring in Dave Parker. Yes. To you gentlemen for doing what some of the local media could not do. That's true. That's Thank true. You, Kelly. I appreciate Thank that, you. Kale. We're trying to do the thing, man. We still wait for you to come back, but uh, you know that's neither here nor there. That ain't ever gonna happen. <laughs> I, I agree with you on that. Although you or do not, there is no trend in the great words of Yoda. Hey, Kel, you have your earpiece in, man. It's because it's coming back distorted here. Are you borrowing Jim's phone? Yeah, you sound like you got smoke at Jim's phone, man. Hold on, I'll take the earpiece off. Yes, please, please. Uh, my, my bad, I'm sorry. How's that? 
That's better. Good. You don't now, sound now, like a we heard, we heard you say smoking Jim was the worst. Good. Right, right. Continues. <laughs> Continues. Smoking Jim is full no. of fake news. Yes, we agree. <laughs> it, no, I said in the words of Yoda, do or do not, there is no try. All right. There you all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's on your mind, Kel? Well, y'all talking these Steeler predictions. I, I want to get on on some of this. First and foremost, I, I want to start with management and just some of the, uh, let's just say, questionable moves and people they brought in on the offseason to help with the offensive line. Mm. They had money to spend, and unfortunately they didn't get the first tier or the second tier offensive lineman. Now, I can't remember the one. I think the one guy from Chicago, his name escapes me, seems to be better. But for years I've been questioning Tomlin and Colbert's judgment when it comes to these uh, draft picks they've done or swings and miss. And we can, I feel that we are confident in adding Kendrick Green when it comes to offensive linemen in, the, in that uh, conversation. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so as much as you want Kenny Pickett to get out there or the people want to, I would just rush because I'll just say even in Patrick Mahomes' rookie season, he only played one game. Exactly. Well, he was playing behind a pro bowl or so. Yeah, Alex Smith. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was, he was big He was better than him back then, but they wanted him to wait, and that was the smart move. That was a smart move. And then what happened? He didn't suffer, you know, lose confidence his rookie year. Uh, he and he came back on in. fire. He had confidence coming in. And he only played one game, Joe. Yeah, he, he, he only played, he only played one game. He was playing. I like the move. The Kelly, I agree. Keep, keep cooking, Kel. Keep cooking. <laughs> well, to, and Luther will attest to this, when it comes to Mitch versus Kenny, uh, hopefully in the home opener against the pa- Patriots, if Mitch has a few incompletions, the boo put in picket chance won't start. <laughs> kind of like that pit game Luther and I went to back in the day when you had Rod Rutherford there, right. and he missed some plays, and all was like boo put in Palco. Yeah, right. so, I remember that. Yeah, we I I almost that. got it. you saved me from catching a couple cases, Carol. I still <laughs> I appreciate that. I would have caught a couple cases because. So I, I say all that to say, give Kenny some as much as people need to give Rod time. People need to give Mitch some time. I know we all. I know everybody wants Kenny, but right now, until Mitch can't do it, it's uh, it's Mitch's team until he proves otherwise. Exactly. Here's a tip. Here's a tip. <laughs> Mitch can't do it. <laughs> so, people no, like I'm just you. saying. People I'm like just you. Just giving him a get tip. Listen, Can I give him wanna... a tip? <laughs> People like you is why you, you know, deserve you know, credit. <laughs> you don't Smoking give any Jim. credit, Jim. Mitch Trubisky led the lowly Chicago Bears to two playoff appearances. Exactly. That's right. And he, and he didn't turn the ball over. Look at his he started. He touchdowns. started one season at North Carolina, played behind a black he, quarterback for two years. He was a number two pick. He was a number two pick. Coach him with Deion Sanders. Listen, hey, Chicago, listen. Chicago, <laughs> Chicago <laughs> couldn't <laughs> wait to run him out to Buffalo. How Ch- often did he get Chicago, it for Buffalo? Chicago, did he pop up? When's the last time, Chicago had, a, when's the last time <laughs> Chicago had a quarterback? They always had no, one. No, no, win, win. win. <laughs> <laughs> when Justin Fields is there now, yeah. they, don't give him a line. they don't give him a line, they don't give him receivers. Chicago <laughs> is a horrible place for quarterbacks. <laughs> Jill McMahon, they even messed up Jill McMahon. Well, he has some stuff going on anyway before that. But they've never had a quarterback. When they won the Super Bowl in 85, they won because of the defense. I think they with uh, Deion Sanders. Isn't oh, he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kelly, keep cooking, Kel. All right. In terms of predictions, I, I, I know this. I the first part of that schedule was rough. And that, when I say the first part of that schedule was rough, it wouldn't shock me if they, or what is it, uh, the first four games, I'm thinking maybe one and three. Ooh, wait, 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 Kelly, no, Kelly, no, Kelly, no. Kelly. First four games, Cincinnati, I already got money New England, <laughs> Cleveland, and New York Jets. You yeah. think that's rough? He might be two and at two. At worst, at best, I think two and two. Yeah. Uh, they should I be, could definitely they should be one and three. And one. Well, who are they going to beat, New England? That should be New England. Uh, Cincinnati is going to be a tough one. New, New England. England. Already New got England. He's got money on Cincinnati. Cincinnati Who's okay. the fifth Cleveland? game? Cleveland. Who's the fifth game? New, uh, then, then they got Buffalo. Buffalo's going to oh. be tough. But they, but they beat Buffalo <laughs> last year. Oh. <laughs> and hey, bu- back. And bu- and Buffalo's, hey, been, back. Buffalo's been reading a lot of press clippings. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. But those first four games, Kelly, come on. Cincinnati, New England, Cleveland, and New York. <laughs> I could see one and three or two and two. Ooh, I can't see. If they the Jets, one and three, come on. Jets. Cleveland is still tough, even with Jacoby Brissett. No, 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 I no. like Brissett. Uh, you I've know I love the him. name Jacoby, but Jacoby's <laughs> going to have a rough one against the Steelers that, that game. 
They got a lot of run. stuff going on. I don't see it. Run the ball. They're going to run the ball. They're going to be that guy just said, run the ball, Stop please. The line. Force wait, wait, what? The line. Why aren't you listening to Kelly? He's saying, right, run the ball. They're not losing to Cleveland. They're not losing Where's the game at? at it's uh, okay. it's at Cleveland. Like it's at Cleveland. <laughs> I need, I'm, I'm seeing like smoking Jim now. <laughs> Jim got it. He <laughs> got, his eyes are big. His eyes are big. His arms aren't ears. long enough. Jim just breaking uh, down for Forrest, man. Dang. <laughs> but it's at Cleveland. I, I still say we're winning. And then the Jets. The Jets. Jets we don't even lot. know if they're quarterback. That that Zach Wilson. He's chasing Cougars all over the place, tearing up his knee. <laughs> he might not even be there. Joe, I think that's why he might Joe do good. Flacco, that's why Joe he's going to do good. Jim. We got them. He's chasing them Cougars. That's why he's going to do good. And then Mac Jones. Because if he doesn't do good, they're not going to want him. Jones. They ain't going to want him anymore. Mac he's Jones he's inspired. Mac Jones is an average quarterback. He's, he's inspired good. now. They, yeah, a quarterback they wouldn't lo- let throw in a playoff game. He reminds me of Kenny Pickett. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm, we're dead off if, if, okay. if Kenny Pickett is Matt That's Jones. Or, I don't know. My draft He's better than that. That's why I compare Kenny Pickett no, to no. my draft. Completely different. <laughs> He's more athletic. I'll still take he Belichick over fella. Tomlin any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Well, Thank let, you. Me well, too, Kelly. What has he done since Tom Brady's left? Nothing. Well, he had Cam Newton. What do you expect? Don't matter. <laughs> what has he done? So, but what has Tom Brady done since he's left Bill Belichick? He's won a Super Bowl, a Super Bowl. and they're already a Super Bowl I favorite. I kind of think New England went to the playoffs last year, didn't they? Yeah. They've done nothing. They've done nothing. Well, and got destroyed. But I will still, I'll still take Belichick over Tom. Well, Thank you. Me whatever. too. Okay, let him, let him win a Super Bowl without – let him win a playoff game without Brady. What? Well, that's and Tom Tomlin never won a playoff game since 2015. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Huh? Let Tomlin let Tomlin win a playoff game. Last one came in what? 2016. Uh, After the 2015 season. Hey, hey, Let's Kelly, see. what'll what'll come first? Um, you know, uh, Belichick winning the Super Bowl or Dino Tomlin getting in the game for Boston College? Uh, he okay. sure didn't get in this weekend. <laughs> what the <that> man? Let <laughs> him take 13 off his back if he ain't going to use it. What do you want to say? I'm going to go all the way up there and watch your boy sit the bench. What did Tomlin do to you? Oh, that's, what, that's right. He kicked you out. He kicked you out. He kicked you out of the scouting room. I'm just wondering. I well, like that. Where's your party at Mount Pleasant, right? right. Hey, North I'm going to just North say this. Hey, Kelly. See the time. Hey, That's a low blow. Hey, Kelly, Jim. what's going to happen first? Steelers win a playoff game or Smoking Jim goes to North for sale? <laughs> Which one? No, you mean Claire? Smoking Jim comes to a party he's invited to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, hey. you forget Smoking Jim's not allowed. It's Claire and we're Smoking Jim's not allowed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to show a passport. <laughs> right, right. Nope. <laughs> So many, so many boroughs. Smoke and Jim is not allowed in Florida. We let him in Swigley. Swigley. Yeah. We let him in Swigley. For now, for now. Let us do a boxing match there. I bet they won't oh. let him back in. Hey, Kel, time is almost up, man. But so your prediction is one and three? To start it off, yeah. Okay. Well, hey, I'm going You three said and they one. had to go three and one. I said they have to go three and Are one. Are they going to go three and yes, one? Yes, they will. I'm confident. First four games. Uh, three, Cincinnati. Uh, two and three. <laughs> Four, two, and three. <laughs> That's that gateway education. <laughs> hey, Cal, appreciate the call. We got to get out of here, man. Go ahead. Always a pleasure, fellas. Y'all have a two good one. Two and three. <laughs> Claudia, what do you want? Two and two? We'll two and two. Two and two. <laughs> Three two and, and four. One. I want to thank everybody, especially Dave Parker. He the was first serious. Major league, two and three. The first major league player I met. Had him on the show, oh, man. man. It's a blessing. For Smoking Jim, who's always wrong. For Claudia, the Hall of Famer, Luther Dupree. We'll check you out next time. Peace. He was serious.